we do hope that everyone's having a uh, a great time uh, this late winter, almost springtime that we're in. Um, I know we were already discussing the weather a little bit earlier, so. Yeah, summer, good point. Good point, Sassy. Bad for my, my, my northern hemisphere bias. I hope it's not been too too hot down there as well. We're actually going to get snow up here on Friday. Mm. We're supposed to get dumped on with a bunch of rain here too, so. Always good if you're ready, Eric, just in case you have a question. Yep. And uh, I guess we should probably hop into stuff. Uh, Vic, you had something you wanted to share? Or? Yeah. So as during our, from our last meetup, uh, as many of you or everyone knows, uh, Jira has been sunsetted, and we were using the Jira platform for all bug reports and feature requests. Um, but we have introduced a new platform, feedback.secondlife.com. There you can report bugs and feature requests just as you did before uh, with, we think, an easier to navigate user interface. This should end up providing a more responsive and we think a little bit more collaborative uh, way of sharing matters um, in regards to Second Life. So also part of this change, you can find all of the older Second Life bug reports archived here, I'll go ahead and drop the link. For more about information about this change, you can also take a look at this page here. Now, I'll also add on to this topic. Uh, we do receive a lot of questions regarding older bugs that residents have submitted um, that now have um, made into the archive. Uh, as far as we can tell, generally, if it was an active bug, um, then it would still have the same status. Uh, fortunately, as before, we really can't comment on ETAs or development processes. But if it was a bug that you submitted um, that you're just uh, you know, curious about if it's still in the system, uh, you can always reach out to us and uh, we can make sure it's in there. Um, but pretty much everything was carefully migrated over to our new platform. And uh, we've pretty much uh, hit the ground running once again. And um, yeah, just reach out to support if there's something uh, that you put in before and you just want to make sure uh, it's still in there. But we can say it pretty much will be. And I'll just uh, jump on that a little bit because Eric did comment about a, a 502 bad gateway. Uh, we actually did, uh, I heard about that just before the meeting that uh, I guess there was an issue going on. Um, it's not us, but it is an issue uh, with accessing it. So. That'll be fixed probably very soon. Um, it figures, you know, these sort of things happen right before a meeting. Um, yeah, Sassy, I was going to mention that as well. Um, Very nice, huh? I find it to be, I find it to be a, a great system as far as the responsiveness. I like the roundup emails. Um, I like the responses I get. Um, you know, I've put a couple of things in there myself and it's really neat to watch it work and watch the feedback on it. Um, I find it much more uh, user friendly, uh, much more responsive. I don't know what the word I want to use is on it um, than what we had previously. Um, it just it also seems to have almost a better, uh, what do I want to say, community feel where we're seeing a lot more um, like discussions and chats, whereas on, on Jira, it tended to be very dry. It tended to be not a lot of comments. So I'm really glad to see that sort of, that level of engagement in it. Um, so The trending part is pretty nice too, where you can yeah, vote for issues um, that you feel should get more eyes. While it, it doesn't affect, I think, development, we can, at least it gives development team a, a scope of what uh, residents are looking at. Yeah, exactly, vote now. <laughs> yeah, I recall um, we used very... to. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say it's Go a ahead. lot more intuitive and and I like the fact that all the people watching it are listed on the side. That's a lot more clearer. So you can see the people that have interest in such a topic, where what communities they seem to be from to at a glance seems to be really um, helpful. 
Uh, yeah. That that email though is <laughs> a really good good wake up call to not use word soup as the titles of your uh, <laughs> of your thing because I did one I did one for marketplace and it was like it, people weren't understanding what I meant and I changed the title and it had like I don't know. 47 words in it <laughs> so when the email came it was in the top five and it was just oh my but that's a topic for next month how to make your <laughs> subject concise so everyone can understand <laughs> i know it was so big but yeah it was funny so yeah it's good it's i i really like it and people are engaged more than ever on jira it seems as well their opinions I see that. It, there's, it's a lot more open uh, a lot more engaging, yeah, uh, I think on both sides, really. And uh, speaking a bit of uh, projects and, and ones that are actually on the feedback page, um, the uh, Mobile Viewer Project which I know is one of Adam's favorite topics, and I know that a lot of other people are interested. Um, it is currently in private alpha still. Um, it is getting a number of new additions. Uh, one of the biggest likely uh, for now is the addition of streaming audio in the mobile viewer. Um, this can make it, you know, that much easier to enjoy your favorite performers, you know, enjoy your stream um, wherever you are with your, with your phone, you know, your mobile device. Um, really adds another level to everything. I know that a lot of people use music in Second Life, so let's make it easier while you're on the go as well. Um, to enable that, if you are using the mobile viewer, uh, you want to go to the the hamburger menu, you know, the line of stripes that's in the upper corner. Then go to settings and developer tools and enable streaming audio and check that out. Um, there's also a ton of other work going on, a uh, number of bug fixes, uh, some UI improvements that are being worked on uh, as we speak. Um, and uh, for more information about all that, uh, yes, there is a uh, link like we always do. <laughs> Indeed, Eric. Um, and additionally, I do want to note that there is a lab gap coming up tomorrow. Um, it'll feature developers and such. And if you want to ask them questions about it, uh, we are taking questions for it via this Google form. Um, so make sure that they can all get in there and get answered. Um, and that'll be on YouTube, of course. That'll be on our Second Life channel uh, again tomorrow. Uh, the 29th at 10 a.m. And sure, here's another link. That's to our YouTube channel, so you can keep an eye on that. Yeah, it is, it is going to be a pre-recorded one this time. Um, they tend to do that with a lot of the really hardcore techie ones, um, just to make sure that everyone gets their questions in, that they don't get missed in chats and so forth, because that can be a little tricky sometimes. Questions so far on uh, Canny or Mobile Viewer? Uh, can you generally no. Um, if it's an issue that we've already recognized, uh, we'll just go ahead and import it through uh, GitHub. There Although are some I have instances seen, I have where seen it come they get up. copied over. Yeah, I think a few okay. uh, by QA will be copied over. Yeah. Um, and uh, Victoria, um, it will eventually be opened up a little bit further, um, you know, as time goes on. Um, they're really kind of consolidating just on the Premium Plus right now because it is a smaller group um, and it helps to kind of parcel out and bring it out further. Uh, we're actually still, you know, not even all Premium Plus were in it, so it's slowly building out um, as we go along. I know that the ultimate goal, of course, is for everyone to have access should they want it. Um, and I certainly think they will. And yes, it's both Android and iOS. 
Yeah, exactly, Vix. Um, I've actually been uh, trying it out. I'm not trying it out today. I'm on desktop, but I have been using it uh, on my own iOS device. Um, I really, really am fond of it. Um, I've talked about it before. It's really exciting. Um, as someone who has been in Second Life for some time, to get that chance to, you know, see your avatar and walk around in your uh, your region and so forth and experience that from your phone. It's it's such a you know after so many years of it being desktop only, it's just really exciting to see that. Same dark over, very much the same. I haven't heard any changes, at least from Firestorm, uh, regarding their use of Jira. Uh, if they do, it would it would definitely be kind of their decision. Uh, they'd have to look at uh, their own side to see if they want to make that change. Um, so we, I don't know if we would have any information regarding how other third-party viewers are going to handle uh, Jira. So this has mostly been just centric around our use of it. And I agree, Sassy, especially, you know, again, speaking from a long term, I know that um, being able to, you know, there's been times where I'll be on a trip or otherwise away from my desktop. And, you know, in the past, trying to scramble around, trying to figure out other mobile solutions or, you know, I am friends or, or, or emailing friends of mine and saying, hey, can you contact so and so for me because this is going on. And it was always just kind of a difficult, really a fight. And so just the ability to grab my phone, hit that login button, and there I am and I can start chatting with people and I can start actually interacting with the world, which was something that was exceedingly limited on uh, any other mobile platform that I've used for SL before. So it's really, really nice to be able to do that. You can tell I'm a fan. <laughs> I really am. No, I didn't get that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't pick that up at all. No. Yeah. anymore even just for movement around your home you know what I mean not not having to be shackled to the desk but to be able to go into the garden or you know sit on the balcony do something like that and still be participating in whatever it is you need to be participating in yeah exactly I know that I've done that with uh, you know going down to the kitchen starting dinner <laughs> have, have it open still do things yeah, it brings an obvious freedom uh, if you don't want to be, like my case, I'd, in order to go on Sec Life, I'm in my office because that's where my sh machine is located. But if I cannot take my phone indoors uh, where it's insulated, uh, you can just see the obvious benefits to that. Not everybody wants to be chained to their desk all day. This, uh, this is just going to allow people to be that much more free. Uh, Patrick, we don't have any plans to to cease the uh, the desktop or or laptop version. So this is going to be running concurrently with uh, uh, the mobile or mobile and desktop version. Will be running concurrently. Yeah, exactly. It's about more possibilities, not making less. Some of us are getting old enough to need our bigger monitors. <laughs> I will not admit to having enlarged the size of the icons on my iPad the other day, so that didn't happen. 
Adam, I'll actually look into that. Um, I haven't actually come across a question like that before, so I am curious as to what the answer is. Uh, I'm thinking you should be able to unsubscribe from emails if you subscribe. Uh, I'll check into that and let you know. Do you mind a uh, uh, DM later on? Yeah, absolutely. I think we can move on to the uh, next topic. And that would be Linden Homes. So for the last month, uh, we've seen a lot more of the Mediterranean and ranch homes uh, come onto the grid, as well as a smattering of other styles. And improvements are underway throughout Belisaria to add more rails and waterways. Yippee. I was excited for that. <laughs> smattering. So you can see more about these and other Linden Home offerings in the Belly Demo region. And obviously, if you're looking for a Linden Home of your own, go ahead and check out our Linden Home selection tool here. And for anyone who's Premium Plus, you do know that you can browse any Linden Home community in world to find the best possible parcel for you and then request see if that parcel can be manually assigned to you yeah we uh, uh, did the uh, the Valentine's love train and I was one of the conductors on that and got to check out a lot of the new rail line uh, in Belisaria and just so pretty um, some of the regions that we went through um, really loved it. And then, of course, uh, you know, the one area, we didn't do it on the, on that trip, but the area that has the, the big glass tunnel underwater. I don't know how many people have gone through that, but I know that a lot of people have been getting a kick out of that and, and finding the, the little itty bitty shiny shark that's in there. Um, just a little tiny. Yes, that's right, Dark Over. But that was a lot of fun and, and really got a chance to kind of explore the rails through there. Um, I'd also add that, you know, as always, uh, we are adding more regions uh, as quick as we can. Um, yeah. Um, you know, there's certainly been uh, every time that we're adding new ranches and Mediterraneans, there are people that are grabbing them up. Um, uh, very quickly, but we're doing all we can to try to keep those on. We're doing some more building along the waterways, so you're going to find a whole lot more homes there as we go along. Yeah, I'm sorry, Eric. I'm sure that there will be a whole lot more. <laughs> Trying to make it too hard on you. We were actually walking around uh, Bellis area about a month or so ago, and we saw a train sort of broken on the tracks. And we thought it was actually, I don't know, missed all the whole announcements about trains and stuff. And we thought it was actually a bot in the train. But it ended mm -hmm. up being one of the SLRR conductor guys. And he was the most incredible experience I've had in SL for such a long time. He's a month old and is a train conductor and knows so much about SL history but also... SL train history and it was the most engaging like 40 minutes taking us around all the different regions and and people popping in and, and out so if anybody is ever interested in that sort of stuff the SLRR train group is amazing they make announcements saying that they're going to do train rides through the day and stuff like that it's really fun yeah you know I love stuff like that I absolutely love it there's a like the drivers of SL and there's a passengers group and all of this. And it's really kind of cool. I've done a done, you know, there's been a couple of people who have done different tours and so forth. And I just, you know, from a personal standpoint, I just absolutely love that. It is, it is so much fun to, to take those tours um, and get that and just, you know, steep yourself in that history and that knowledge um, thank you, Sassy, for adding that in. 
Um, you know, it's, it's something that I don't think a, a lot of us really get, you know, a whole lot of time. We're, we're busy in our own, like, worlds here in Second Life, which is fine. Um, but it's really neat when you get those chance to kind of step out of that and, you know, do the, do a balloon tour or a plane trip or a train trip or all of this kind of thing. It just makes the world that much grander um, and that much more memorable, I feel, to have those experiences. Sure, and the fact that he was a month old and had found his amazingly happy place like he was able to tell us the history of the actual train that he was using which was from like 2009 or something and apparently was the best of all the train models that were available and no he was a brand new user dark over he he was apparently a retired um gentleman he was also deaf in real life which he was happy to disclose himself so i'm not putting anything out there um because my partner actually asked if the train had a bell if it actually worked and so he said that he would use it but he wouldn't know so to tell him and Mel was so tickled because he just kept beeping it for him. But um, but the the fact that this guy has read all of this stuff on Second Life before he joined, he had been interested for years, but waited till he left his job to engage. And now it's, you know, it's what he does is make other people really happy. So it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. And to see somebody find that in SL in 2024 was just, beautiful yeah it was amazing that's a great yeah, that's story, really magical that's really magical you know that's that's yeah i just i'm i practically giddy over that that is so cool it really really was he ticked every box on the new residents we want you know the ones that saw it you know because sometimes with at the welcome hub people come in with an expectation of what SL is and you can't really meet those expectations but then some people just get it you know they they're going to be here like we are 17 18 years on yeah exactly i know that i mean for myself when i first experienced second life um many many years ago i really wasn't all that sure what you know i wasn't really you know, kind of poking around, not sure what I was looking at and all of this until I really found kind of my niche. I had to kind of go out there and find my place. And so it's really neat to hear a story like that where someone definitely, you know, came in and just found their spot right off the bat and found something that that makes their experience, makes their day. Um, and conversely, also, because we're talking about them here, you're sharing their story. Um, not only is it is it making their day great, but it's also making yours great. Yeah, you'd be surprised how invigorating it is to see new faces on the grid in the community. Um, especially their reactions to once they've learned uh, how to maneuver, you can just see them kind of grow into their own persona. So that that's a almost re reinvigorate yourself, you know, saying, geez, look at these new faces and we're building this community. This community is continuing to grow. Yeah, and, you know, I'm going to jump into the next topic right off of that. Oh, thank you. Because uh, I did want to. I did want to talk a little bit about the Welcome Hub. Um, as you may be aware, you know, we've been doing a lot of work on our new user goods, uh, and that's included the creation of the Welcome Hub and all the surrounding portions of it. Um, we are still doing additional work on it. Uh, we're still adding things to it with some regularity. Um, and one of the biggest additions on that recently, oh, good, Izzy. Um, has been the Second Life Community Exhibition, uh, SLCE, which I guess you can kind of think of it like almost uh, like a World's Fair for Second Life or, you know, similar to almost like the birthday event, but different. Um, that has kind of a pick of the best of the communities in world. Um, at launch, there's 11 communities involved. Uh, Kaladin, Virtual Ability, Nonprofit Commons, Bay City, Burn2, Drivers of SL, and a number of others. 
Uh, more are planned to be added in the coming months. Um, and you can learn a little bit more about this at, uh, let me give you this plural right here. There's also a launch video that you might want to enjoy and watch. Um, it shows all the, the opening of the event. And also, if you're part of a community you think should be included there, um, there will be additional communities added and eventually probably some shifted out. Um, but if you know one should be included that you're part of, uh, feel free to suggest them on that role there. And Izzy, you wanted to jump in? Uh, yes, basically, uh, we're actively curating through the applications that we've already received, and we've received a ton of applicants. Uh, and those applicants that have been selected for round two uh, should find their response from us probably within about a week or so, possibly less than that, but give us about a week just to uh, be sure. And if you've looked at the map, you'll see that the new area includes some of the same size, but also some of the larger uh, parcels. Some of the existing exhibitors will be moving to those larger parcels, which means they're going to be building bigger and even better uh, builds than they had before. So it's really exciting. We've really liked it at the Welcome Hub for the mentors and stuff like that because it gives us somewhere straight away to take a new resident and go, look, look what you can be part of. Exactly. It's kind of our response to what is Second Life and the best terse answer in my personal opinion is community. Yeah, exactly, Izzy. I mean, that's that would be my answer as well. And I'm very pleased with the, the Welcome Hub and seeing the mentorship. Um, I know that both as a resident and as a Linden, um, being able to connect people with resources that they need, uh, especially when they're new, and having a place where we can show people what's there um, has always been something that you know, it makes for makes for a better experience for everyone. Um, you know, it's certainly a lot better than just being, you know, at an info hub hanging out or or worse yet, just not knowing where to go at all. So having a welcome hub uh, like what we have and like with the resources it has and with the mentors it has, I think it's just it's it's good for everyone. It's good for the communities that are here. It's good for the people that want to come in. Um, and I think that we're seeing a lot of reason for people to come in nowadays with like the mobile project and so forth. Definitely. Awesome. And if you haven't actually, no, no problem. If you haven't actually been to the community uh, exhibit area, I highly suggest that you check it out because not only is it, you know, there's, you know, a dozen or so current exhibits and we're going to be expanding. We're going to start swapping in and out, obviously, once we get full and everything. But also, it's a great example of existing people and new people to Second Life uh, bonding together and helping each other and showing what Second Life can be. So it's in kind of a mini SLB that that'll be there all year round, just constantly changing what exhibits are there. Any any uh, inspiration we can draw from the SLBs is uh, amazing because those are our top community gathering event. Those are the ones that everybody remembers. As soon as SLB is done, you know the next question is when's the next SLB. Um, so th those are the tent poles uh, for I believe for the community. So you know, any inspiration and any pieces we can draw from those and put them into the welcome up, I think is just good. Hey, Vix, when is the next SLB? Uh, let me look. <laughs> I, I will. I'm just going to, I don't really have, I have almost no information on the next SLB, but I will note that uh, there should be information coming up pretty soon. Coming soon, soon because trademark. Because it's around that time. All I can say is we're turning 21. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Mm-hmm. Raise a glass to it. 
Yeah, 21. I don't think uh, for the number of times over the years we've heard about the end of SL, it's really wonderful to see how um, resilient we all are, how strong we are as a community. Uh, so it's really exciting to 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 finally reach that sort of where we're having like 20 last year, 21 this year. Um, so yeah, SLB 22 will be the hangover. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. You mean you're not Stellar Sunshine, Eric? I was just going to say before about the Welcome Hub, just to get back on that for a second. The Welcome Hub and the new community um, showcase areas, the <laughs> exhibition areas, what it's also been doing too is showing older residents that as Wendy just said with the whole oh it's doomed it's going to close blah. Um, <laughs> uh, that new residents are coming in every few seconds like you know people stand there and go does anybody even join SL anymore well look <laughs> just stand there and look at that circle and you're seeing them coming in and People that are returning to Second Life is also an amazing thing each day too. You have a few people that will say they left five years ago or they made an account in 2007, etc. Um, you know, and then and then older people that come to just have a sticky beak are seeing the exhibition area and being really intrigued by that and expanding the horizon. So it's been great. And it's really useful for existing residents who want to see, you know, what's happening right now, uh, you know, what trends are ha are uh, going on, uh, what's new, uh, what new groups are out there and such. Now, obviously, right now, there's only a dozen uh, parcels there, but we intend to expand and expand so that way people will constantly see, you know, new groups that they might be get involved in or new, quote unquote, vacation uh, location because I know lots of people love to explore Second Life and see different areas. Exactly, like a proper expo. I always tend to go a little meta with uh, welcome areas and you know, topics like this, but uh, welcome areas in any game uh, I feel is is almost an interview portion where the here the new resident is the employer and the interviewee is everyone else and you're wanting to know if this is going to be a good fit for you you want to know should I spend my time here should I spend my money here um, should I stop playing the other games or worlds um, so having a proper and welcoming and easy to slide into a welcome area uh, where you're not overwhelmed, but you are presented with, um, you know, all the positive facets, I think is really key. Right, and there's some amazing different um, groupings of the mentors. Like, they come from all over, and, and shout out to London City, too. Um, you know, lots of people recommend London City and uh, um, the Firestorm Welcome Hub as well, to, you know, because everybody does their bit and everybody sends people to the different things that they think might suit them. But also the fact that, you know, you can have a conversation and people find out that, you know, you manage a store or you own a store or you do machinima or things like that, like Caitlin Tobias is one of the mentors, but she also had one of her movies featured at the cinema there. You know, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, we were as proud as Punch of that. So it, it just, new residents are, are constantly kind of wowed by what what everybody that mentors has done in their time here. Yeah, absolutely. And not to downplay things that you've done as well, Sassy, so.
I want to kind of throw a little curveball here. I'm going to ask you all a couple of questions, because or a question for sure. Um, I um, might be working on a little side project, and I, I want to hear from all y'all um, things that, um, how can I put it, things that you, you know, that are, say, land related, because I am in land, um, that you would like to see more information out there um, to help people learn how to work with it. Uh, for example, you know, like more information on the ins and outs of, oh, group land or, you know, things like this or how to best set up a new region or things like this. And I want to hear that story too, Sassy. But I'd love to get some of your feedback on that. Just little, you know, little things that might be, you know, how best to cut land, how best to, you know, set up your settings so that people can learn about your region. Yeah, you're gonna have to tell the rest of that story, Sassy. I'm a huge Bruce Willis fan. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of you want to know. He kind of here for Die Hard. There was a huge thing, a, a big region was done with the effects, so they did the plane smashing into the tunnel and the whole thing, and uh, and we were, myself, Grazia Horwitz, and one other from one of the tabloid uh, were invited as Second Life Press, and Bruce Willis was in world, he was in a studio in LA, and they made him an avatar, um, Sashi Vixen of Adam and Eve made his avatar, to look like him and he did a full-blown press conference everybody else in the press conference were real life press and they all had avatars and everything and it was amazing it was just amazing like that was one of those things where you go i came to second life to salsa and i got to be press for bruce willis like it was huge it was like yeah that's i know it's it's it seems so silly but that's that's a life experience that I would never have had in my life. So, yeah, it was through Second Life. So, yeah. That's cool. Amazing. And funnily enough, it was the same day. It seemed to have been the same day Sculpties went live because we left the press conference and people had hair dripping down their faces. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just remember the two things being really tied together with Sculpties suddenly hitting the grid and, and Bruce Willis press conference. That seems like an appropriate description of sculpties at that time, too. Uh, yeah, well, because people couldn't res them because nobody had... I exactly. Think people hadn't updated their viewers, so everybody was just seeing weird Tauruses on people's faces. Or No, it was an apple. Sorry, it was the apple. The manipulated apple. Ah, right, right. The, the, the base sculpt shape. Right. Yeah, land. <laughs> go, goes. Go, goes time oh we're very much on the same page there uh go go that that's that's exactly exactly what i'm talking about Yeah, with land, it seems to be one of those, if you happen to know it from 2011, you're set, but nobody's telling anybody how to do it in 2024. Yeah, object bonus is definitely one. I know that people get, get a bit confused on that. I think we have exactly a few resources on those here. topics, uh, either on the Knowledge Base or the Solution Center. But yeah, uh, any more ways to to explain it, even with visuals, I think are are huge uh, is a, is a plus because yeah, land can be complicated, even for residents that have been around a while. So about um, landscaping of mainland, people don't realize when they buy something that's deformed that that might be all they can ever do. Um, they don't realize they can't terraform it the same way that you can a region. 
Right. You you buy the side of a mountain and you really want beachfront. That can be a challenge. I've I've right. <laughs> had to try to help people on that before many times. And I certainly understand that frustration because if you didn't know going into it, so that would be something for sure. Right, especially especially when they're actually buying the land. Speaking of which, do the Linden will the Lindens ever do the old uh, <laughs> land the land grabs of two thousand and six seven because they were the most fun ever when you just let whole part uh, like whole regions go live and everybody could go and get a five twelve for five twelve Linden. Um, no comment. That's the best I can say on that. Yeah, I guess it doesn't uh, really make sense with um, premi uh, Linden Homes. Maybe not. There might be some thoughts, though. So we'll see. That's all I'm saying. One, one request that I have is I really, really, really have been begging for this from the beginning is to put the Linden Homes um, homes into the library. Um, I know that it's a premium perk, but I think if somebody has land even if it's a rental or whatever like that and they actually like the other homes they shouldn't be necessarily deprived of that or just blueprints so that we can use them if we want to make add-ons for homes that's an interesting idea have you uh by chance put that into the feedback uh I have asked in the past for it a few times, but I could do the okay. canny thing, at least for the blueprint or even even a shell that we were able to um, take into three. Like if you had it on the wiki, this is the shell of this build, this is the shell of that build mm -hmm. um, to use to build against in Blender or Maya. It would completely open that up as a as a business because yeah. um, hate to say that some of those buildings are not snap to grid very well, so they're hard to to measure up against. That's an interesting thought. I like that. Um, I wanted to say something about the idea for um, new tutorials about how to use land. Um, I have a friend who is in his 60s uh, with a full sum and more. And it was uh, actually owned by his girlfriend who had passed away in real life. And now he has control of all of this land. But he <laughs> is very clueless on how to, to do even the, the easiest of things, like dividing land. Or he has no idea what the group benefits are, like the 10%, or how that works. And um, so I believe that the videos, if they are put into small snippets, of little bits of information so it's not too overwhelming for people like senior citizens to help them digest that information better and not overwhelm them. Also non-English speaking residents too because video format means they can watch somebody doing the steps rather than have somebody just type at them. Yeah, this is true. That's always a concern I have is making sure that um, everybody can access them. Uh, you know, not everyone can watch a video, so I want to make sure there's text there. Um, and, you know, for those who need that, I want to make sure there's some localization. So I get that. I understand that. I agree, Celestial. That would be a cool yeah. event, but we would also be messing with um, resident-owned items, so they they would probably need to be involved as well. <laughs> let me let me let me 
put two possibilities forward that neither of which I, I necessarily uh, know would happen, but just a thought is um, what if there was a setting in the viewer um, that handled um, uh, worked like um, draw distance but worked on the, the Z axis specifically so that it wouldn't show anything that was over a certain Z axis. Maybe that's a possibility. Um, that, would be cool. that might be something that That'd might be, be something to suggest in feedback. Um, I know that we did have um, 14, 15, 16 years ago, uh, we did briefly uh, champion a uh, like a, a Second Life cleanup week kind of thing to encourage people to, you know, do their own cleanup uh, should they wish to. So maybe that's a thought as well as to, you know, again, bring something like that up and promote the idea, you know, it's almost like a, a community pride in making sure your place looks the best it can. Um, you know, and encouraging people to do that rather than doing it in a punitive way, but try to encourage it in a positive way. So just a couple of thoughts. I, I think that I think I mentioned something like I, or I questioned it years ago, uh, not years ago, last year, um, about swapping parcels for parcels instead of it needing a monetary value. What if uh, the Lindens turned around and said, look, we are trying to clean up mainland. Um, we understand you've got some obscure shaped parcel or something like that um, and you can't necessarily sell it or you're not actually using it or something. We'll give you credit for that parcel or something like, like where you could then use that credit towards something else instead of actually having to have cash for something else, if that makes sense. I don't even know if I'm making sense. Just like I've got a hu we've got a huge parcel that's adult um, because when Zindra opened up, we thought that everybody would have to go to Zindra if you were going to do anything. Um, so we've got this huge parcel, but to get rid of that parcel means selling it and getting a decent price for it, because then to get something else would cost a lot of money. But it'd be nice if you could just say, can I have that parcel instead? Like just do a swap if it's Linden Land. Yeah, that would be interesting. I might also just put in that feedback because um, that's an interesting idea. Certainly be something we could look at. Because that could clean up a lot of stuff, you know. And I, I tend to think that a lot of the mainland issues is um, because of all those lucky, uh, really, really early on adopters that got free land as part of their their system, however that worked. I'm not ex exactly sure how that worked. But they no longer log in, but they've still got a skybox or something just sitting there. But they haven't done anything in SL for like 15 years because they haven't needed to because it doesn't cost them anything. Maybe Linden Lab Labs needs to give Linden Lab needs to give them like a, a a grace period, a couple of emails over a year, and sort of say we need you to come in and <laughs> do something, or we're gonna I don't know sweep it up. Yeah, it's in certainly interesting. I really like that idea, Dark Over. It isn't, uh, speaking as someone that actually does uh, spend their day working on abandoned land, uh, we actually do look at some of that, um, probably not as much as we could, uh, it often depends on our workload, uh, but I do keep an eye out for that uh, while I'm working on things, if there are things that we can do to improve, you know, say, for example, just as a basic example, um, say if it's one of the really old roads that's out there that may have uh, uh, ended up 
partially going into a residential parcel over time or things like that, we will look at that and try to clean that up and figure out what we might need to do with the land itself uh, as an abandoned parcel comes up. It's not every time, unfortunately, but that is a good idea and it's something that we do try to do when we're working abandoned tickets. And yeah, for what it's worth, uh, I'd say that a most of my day uh, is either spent um, working abandoned land or is spent uh, in Belisaria, uh, specific to um, any issues that might come up uh, with parcels or um, premium plus assignment of parcels, uh, which comes up quite often. That. That's actually a uh, post office box. Yeah. So it's still on Battery Street, the physical office, but mailings, yeah, you would use the, uh, the post mailing box. Oh, if only I could say, I could not say that. Mark over, it can, uh, that would fall under ad farming policy. So yes, that can be uh, abuse reporting. I would also add that Belisaria isn't the only thing having a fifth anniversary coming up. Uh, next month will be my fifth year as a Linden. Oh, congrats. Yes, thank you. I may have to put a cake up here at the, uh, the meeting area for that. You're too kind, Sassy. And thanks all for the congrats. I have to find a Gatorade tank so I can dunk you. Usually reserved for winning I'm the scared. Super Bowl, but you know what? Make an exception. Uh, my team didn't win this year, so. <laughs> We have a few minutes left. Any questions? This has been great. I've uh, seen a lot of ideas come forth. I know we've mentioned it before. Um, Feedback.secondlife.com, submit that feature request. No matter, it doesn't matter how big or small the idea is, it could be a minor improvement to something that's already good. Send it in, and uh, we have a review team that does look at them. We can't guarantee any action against them, as always, but um, we definitely want to see them um, you know, put in the right channel. Yeah, we did hear about that, Sassy, just a bit before the meeting. Uh, should be back real soon. Um, so have no fear. It's always going to work out like that when you're going to a talk about it that it's going to break on you. Take care, Tuvok. Have a good day.
Eric, I'm not aware of any um, restructuring of land fees, um, but if anything does come about and uh, made available, you'd definitely uh, hear from us as well as on Feature News. Certainly glad to have you, Celestial. Always happy to share and discuss. Uh, in mainland, uh, EAP and post PBR, was there something specific you were thinking of? I'm going to see if the voice works. Does this work? So we can hear you. It does. Oh, good. Okay. For, for some reason, yeah, I didn't think my mic was working because the toggle button wasn't actually uh, working for me. No, for, main, uh, for the land use fees, it was actually mainly just wondering if there might be um, uh, sort of, I guess, a restructuring so that it's not just always doubled for people who might need more land. I know a lot of people who might want more land but then not always want to be able to afford doubling their land use fees but if there were sort of smaller increments um, it might help there be you know less abandoned land uh, people may be more able to keep their parcels or, or smaller parts of parcels without actually you know having a bunch over but the the mainland EAP setting was something i think i brought up in the last meeting i was here was about um just the the mainland default EAP setting being unnaturally dark um and i think the last time you know, like ever since EAP was rolled out i believe and I think the last time I asked here, uh, it was basically said, or maybe by someone else, that um, they were kind of waiting to see what PBR, the effect that PBR had on lighting across the board before potentially fixing uh, the default mainland EAP setting, mainland wide. Yeah, much what Dark Over just said. It's still in progress. It is being looked at. I just had a, um, a money grab thought. Um, would Linden Lab ever consider uh, the – Eric just inspired this thought, actually. <laughs> um, if you have a 512 parcel, if you have a 4096 parcel or whatever, you, sometimes you don't actually want a bigger parcel. You just want more prims. Would Linden Lab ever consider doing an add-on tax fee, whatever you want to call it, to increase prims by prim count allotments? So if you, uh, yeah, if you have, you know, 300 prims allowable for your land, you don't want a bigger piece of land. You don't want to move. But if you could spend a dollar extra a month and get an extra 150 prims or something like that, or however it works out in prim costs, um, that might be a great way to increase the coffers at, at LL, but without any sort of movement and, and make people quite happy uh yeah yeah as long as it's it's a good price because yeah you're not getting more land so it is just the prim count but it could maybe change things because i know with regions you increased the region numbers so it i guess it's possible it's a good idea, and I, I know that uh, certainly something that I've not, it's not the first time I've heard ideas similar to it, because I have heard that specifically with uh, with Linden Homes in particular. Um, but I don't know if there's anything up on feedback, so that might be yet another one for the list, because okay. I would like for us yeah. to take a look yeah. at that. Definitely put on feedback. Um, yeah. yeah, so many good ideas. Um, I would say that is already available on private regions is in the form of an object bonus um, where you can basically max out, you know, uh, to your heart's content, a certain parcel, but you just have to be cognizant that surrounding parcels are going to have less to play with. Um, would it be applied to mainland? I couldn't say. That would be a lot to unpack there. But uh, at the very least, I would say summarize the idea because it's still a solid one. Um, yeah, it could be incentivized as like a print pass or something. Um, put it through. Yeah. Um, there has to be at least 10 ideas that were put in today <laughs> that should all be making into feature requests. <laughs> and I like them a lot. Hey, we're about to, at the end of our time today. I want to thank you for a great session today. Uh, it's been lovely to be here. Dark over. Thank you for attending, everybody. Good to see familiar faces and some new ones, and uh, we'll see you next month.
Take care, all. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next month, same time. Take care, everyone. Thank you.